Hey everyone. I wanted to share a few thoughts on a movie I recently watched called American Movie. And this was a documentary from 1999. And it, it tells the story of Mark uh, Borchardt, who is a uh, Milwaukee-based independent filmmaker. And the idea behind the film is that he was getting ready to shoot a feature called Northwestern. And I believe this was around 1994, 1995. Um, so he was getting ready to start this feature, but he didn't have the money to to really embark on it. So what he decided to do was to make a short film called Coven. And the short film, the idea was that the short film would be sold direct to video and that he would sell enough units at a certain price point that he would be guaranteed a certain uh, revenue from it that he would then turn around and put into making the feature. Now, American Movie focuses on the production of that short film. And it's a really interesting... What I found so interesting about this, watching it, what, 22 years after the documentary was released, is how it's such a snapshot of a particular moment in independent filmmaking. But also, you know, so it came out... the the, the Events depicted in the film happened between like 1995 and 97, and then the, the documentary itself was released in 1999. And what I found what I found interesting, even at this level, was the how much I think things had changed between 1995 and 96 when it was being shot, and 99 when it came out. And the reason I say that is that by 1999, digital video. Uh, consumer level, I mean, consumer level, mini DV uh, video, had it pretty much just appeared on the marketplace, as I as I remember. Now, in in the documentary, Mark's movie Coven is shot on sixteen millimeter. And that was that was still you know at that time that was still really the expected um, standard for uh, for a film. I mean, certainly people like me, we're making amateur films on uh, video cam with camcorders, but in terms of a film that you were going to get like screened or put onto festivals, that kind of thing, you were really still shooting on film. And what watching this movie brought back to me was how the 90s were a weird time for, for independent filmmakers, I think, because on the one hand, you had the success stories of people like Robert Rodriguez and Kevin Smith, who had had these ultra low budget um, breakout hits that established them as major filmmakers. And so on the one hand, anything seemed possible. You know, there was very much this idea that you could make a movie for like practically no money um, and get it out there. If, if you got it into festivals and got it in front of the right people, that it could launch, you know, your, your filmmaking career. But then there was the reality, and the reality of it is that shooting on film, of course, was extremely expensive and required a certain level of equipment that was not easy to come by, and also a level of knowledge of how to operate that equipment. Um, I mean, you know, I won't get into all the details, but if you watch the movie, it's really quite striking. I mean, things that today would be, we would be doing with a smartphone and a nonlinear editing program on our computer uh, were taking up, taking the talents of multiple people, uh, lots of different pieces of equipment, uh, you know, things like sound mixing, you know, syncing your audio and, and, and film footage, uh, and, and, you know, creating, you know, doing the uh, hand, hand splice, you know, um, edits hands by hand, hand splicing. And, uh, all these things, right? I mean, that we don't have to deal with now shooting on video. I mean, the technology has come so far. But uh, as I was saying, what, what I mean, what also struck me was to think about just even between the time the documentary was shot and it was released, how much, how far the technology came at a consumer level. Because while mini DV was not uh, necessarily a replacement for film, I'm not saying that, you know, that it was. A replacement for shooting on film, but all I'm saying is it made it possible to make a, a video at a level of technical polish that was significantly
beyond uh, what you could have done, you know, just a few years earlier with consumer, again, with consumer grade uh, camcorder equipment. So American movie, like I said, it's very much an interesting snapshot of a, t of a particular time. Uh, and I think it, it also, I mean, beyond that, it's also a really interesting study of a man you know, with very ambitious ideas, very much driven by his passion and willing to do seemingly anything to get his movie made. And you really have to admire that kind of spirit, that, that independent uh, spirit. The film does not sh shy away from showing the challenges of it either and his, and his struggles in his personal life. Uh, you know, I won't get into a lot of the details, but it's not a, uh, it does not take a romantic view of what was involved in making a film and also perhaps why he wanted to make the film. Uh, you know, he talks in the documentary about, and this is the, the, the filmmaker, Mark, uh, who's profiled in the documentary that I'm talking about here. He talks about his struggles, you know, with employment and that he doesn't want to, you know, he's shown uh, working at a job in a as like a groundskeeper at a cemetery, and he talks about how he really does not want to do this long term. He very, very much has his eye on the, on the, on the prize of becoming a filmmaker, and achieving, as he puts it, the American dream. You know that he he wants to achieve that. I think th sounds like through the process of being being a successful filmmaker. And his his ambition is, and his goals are certainly. Um, you know, and, and how hard he works to achieve them are certainly admirable. And and uh, the, I think the documentary does a good job of, you know, looking at that disparity, though, sometimes that exists between what we want to do and what we're, you know, the reality of the situation. But it's not a discouraging film, I, I don't think. It's not a discouraging message because, after all, he does end up completing the short film. And, and the movie... The documentary ends with the premiere of the film at the at a local theater, and there's nothing like that experience of being able to sit and see this product that uh, the, the product of your of your um, efforts come to fruition, and to see other people, ex you know, experience it with other people, and hopefully enjoying it. Um, now, what I was not clear on from the documentary and. Uh, I, I, from what I've been able to glean from reading about it, I, I think I, I think I know the answer now. But it sounds like the feature-length film that he, that Mark was hoping to make called uh, Northwestern, was not completed. And I, I mention that because it does get into an interesting aspect of discussions about independent filmmaking at that time in the '90s. And even into the early 2000s with documentaries like Lost in La Mancha about uh, Terry Gilliam's efforts to make his Don Quixote film. What I, what, one thing I find interesting, and I, hadn't, I never really thought about this before, but so much of the discussions and the depictions of independent filmmaking at that time are couched in a kind of... Uh, not necessarily negativity, but maybe a sense of futility in, in a lot of cases, that there's almost this sense of, that the sense that trying to get your movie made is the most insurmountable challenge imaginable. And in a lot of ways it can be, it, especially then. I mean, it could be that, because you look again at the cost that was involved. I mean, that's another thing I'll, I'll touch on in a second, but anyway, my, my point is that there is, there is this uh, sense of almost futility in a lot of what I remember about the discussions about independent filmmaking at that time. And I remember, you know, a, a piece of advice I was given in 1997. I was working on a feature-length documentary, and the person that I was interviewing, and I was like 13 at the time, the person that I was interviewing who worked in film you know, asked me what I, what I wanted to do with all this. And I said, well, you know, I'd like to, I'd like to make films. I, know I want, I want to continue. I want to be a filmmaker and make films. And he was very supportive. I, I, I do want to be clear about that. He was very supportive, but he did point out very accurately too, that filmmaking, as he put it, was a very expensive hobby. 
and that if you're going to do it, you, you really have to look at, you know, how can you make it financially sustainable? And this, again, this was in the 90s when you were looking at shooting on film and everything that that entailed. And an American movie reminded me of that because today, of course, we have the luxury of making movies pretty much for nothing. If you, if you know how to do it, you know, if you, and, and you can work that way, you can make a movie with your smartphone and, you know, we, we know how to do it, right, with all the new technology now that uh, you can make a movie for pretty much zero dollars. And that gives you the luxury of being able to release it for free on uh, YouTube where, or, you know, online anywhere, I mean, not just YouTube, but any online site where you can really get the film out there. And that's exciting. You know, that's been a great development. When you go back and look at something like American Movie, what I was so struck by was how, even with making the short film, uh, the, the filmmaker Mark was so, uh, and had to be, so focused on making the money back. You know, he had calculated, like, exactly how many video units he would have to sell at exactly what price point to make the amount of money that he, that he needed to be able to pay his cast and crew and, to, you know, pay his investor and to have enough to put into making the feature. And, uh, of course, that's still true with commercial filmmaking. I, the, that hasn't changed, but what I'm saying is, like, the idea of being able to make a movie and to be able to make it look as good as it can now with, with the technology we have at our fingertips, uh, to be able to do that in a way that doesn't really cost anything is remarkable, right? And it's such a, it's such a, a, a change of pace from, you know how things were at that time in, in the 90s. So, um, yeah, so, uh, you know, American Movie is also a really interesting snapshot of that aspect of it as well. And uh, what I think, you know, when, when, I looked, when I looked at this documentary, again, I didn't see it in 99 when it came out. So watching it now, it's also, you know, it, it's kind of a, uh, a time capsule in a way, um, and I think there was a lot, there was a lot of interest at that time in, you know, in making independent movies and the, you know, the, again, as I say, the kind of the, the sense of futility that often seemed to accompany uh, these projects. And I've wondered sometimes, uh, since, since thinking about that, it, it kind of made me wonder, how discouraging was that? for a lot of young filmmakers at the time. I mean, obviously it would have been difficult to deal with if you were actually going through the process of making a film. I'm sure there were lots and lots of stories of people who, you know, ran out of money. And they're very real concerns. I'm, I'm absolutely not uh, trivializing that. But I, I do wonder for people who never had the experience of making a film who saw some of these stories, I do kind of wonder if there was a sense of, uh, you know, futility or, you know, bordering on like actual, you know, discouragement from undertaking it. I don't know. Of course, I think if you really want to make films, you, you will do whatever you have to do to make that happen. Um, I think if you, if you get so discouraged by the prospect of things getting wrong that you never even uh, give it a try, then you probably weren't... Uh, you know, that serious about it to begin with, but I don't know. So maybe in some way that these, these movies were kind of a, you know, wake up call too, for a lot of people about what would act, what you'd be in for if you actually tried to go this route of making a, uh, a, a, you know, a low budget movie at that time. I don't know. I, I, I think, you know, I, it, back then, I think I even, I've always found it inspiring just because there were people out there doing what they were passionate about and working so hard at it and doing whatever they needed to do to see the projects through. And whether or not, you know, the, whether or not the films were always successful, I, I think was really kind of beside the point, at least for me. Um, it wasn't beside the point for the people who had invested all the, the time and money in it, I guess. But for me, um, as a, well, what was I, like 15 when this came out? You know, to me, it just said, you know, it just reinforced the idea that I already knew about filmmaking, that nothing is really easy. Uh, it can become easier with experience and finding out how to, you know, be able to do things that you want to do with the resources you, you have, yes. But at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's always hard work.
and you always have to uh, push yourself. Um, you know, uh, these are things that anybody who makes films knows. I'm kind of preaching to the choir here, I think. But, you know, the, these movies, uh, like American Movie, Lost in La Mancha, I mean, again, two very different, you know, directors here that we're talking about. But at the end of the day, both of them, you know, are, whether we're talking about, you know, Mark in American Movie or Terry Gilliam in Lost in La Mancha, both are filmmakers, you know, possessed by a singular vision who are willing to do whatever it takes to get that on the screen and that's really what it's about and regardless of their relative you know successes failures whatever um you know i think it's very inspiring anyway um uh, so if you have a chance to check out american movie it's an interesting time capsule of what was going into making a uh in, you know independent uh, film in the mid 90s and i think for anybody who makes films you'll find it uh perhaps uh you know inspiring to think about Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.